Hi there, this is Russ at Wingsaber Historical Fencing, and this morning I'm going to go over one of the three living lineages that we train here. We do it a little bit less because it's a stripped down system, but among our repertoire is Georgian swordplay, which you may know by the name of Parikalba. I was taught it under the name of Kevser from the Kevsereti region of Georgia by a gentleman named Levan Tatishvili when I was in graduate school in Budapest in the late 1990s. So I'm going to have a couple of my students be the models for the action here, and I'm going to walk you through what I was taught so that you can learn to play with it, use it, adapt it to what you need, or just use it as a cross-training for your own benefit. Hang tight, and here it comes. Okay, so I'm back. This is Coleman. Hi, Coleman. Hello. So Coleman is going to stand in a fencing-type stance, not the one our lineage uses, but a sided stance and I'm gonna have you throw cut one at me, just like our system does. So throw cut one, that's cut two. Try cut one, there you go, good. Now, we train this system with a 45 degree-ish cut. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you throw that cut more vertically. Okay. So try again, there you go, good. So as you come down, you're gonna throw cut one, then throw a much more vertical cut two afterwards. Now throw a much more vertical cut four. Good. Now what Levon had me doing was the following. Throw cut one. As he makes a cut from that angle, I make the cut from that angle. Cut two. As he cuts that angle, I cut that angle. As he cuts the other angle, I cut that angle. So we're gonna go back and forth and we're gonna do this for a bit. He makes a cut, I mimic the cut. He makes a cut, I mimic the cut. He makes a cut, I mimic the cut. Those of you who are getting Nita Nichiryu vibes, seeing the displacements of the cuts here, except for the part where I just died because I was talking to the camera and not paying attention to Coleman. Bleh. The blows are getting displaced by the edge-to-edge -edge contact. And as soon as I can clear an opening, I have the possibility for a thrust or anything else I wanted to do. But for friendly play, that wouldn't be done. In fact, if in friendly play he opens up a cut on my hand, he owes me a sheep for every grain of barley he can stick inside the cut. One of the various ways you ensure that you're doing this in a friendly way and not cutting your neighbor, or just holding it backwards. Since the polish used in the system generally don't have false edges, that's much safer. So that is the stripped down version. Full parikoba, or full kebser, should have a buckler here. And Levin lamented to me that I didn't have a buckler or anything we could use for it because pie plates were simply not going to work. And that would be held with the sword. Or if you had a shield, you could simply hold it here and take this geometry off the map so it couldn't be hit and use these cuts in a way that you don't get tangled up on the shield while you're removing the target area. Remembering that for historical sword play, protecting yourself from a thrust is gold, and it's not an accident that medieval guys often just kept their shields tucked right in until they needed to do something impressive with it, like punch students in the face. <laughs> All right, so let's see it once again. I'll lead the cuts. Okay. You mimic the cuts. And if I cut, and you cut, and if you are brave, you will not be hit. And that was actually what Levin told me the first time I looked at him like, are you nuts? So you cut on the angle I'm cutting on. Oh, you didn't, you got cut, ha ha. And that comes into part of the actual game of training this, because you have to keep an eye on your opponent and watch for the distance, the angulation, the timing, the tempo, this is a very stripped down little game you can play here, but there's an awful lot in it that you can exploit as a training game or as an introduction to Parikoba and Kevser in its own right. Okay, so Coleman and Kat will demonstrate for us. All right, go to town, guys. And you can see how they are watching keenly to get a sense of, uh-oh, what's the other person doing? And how do I continue playing the game through? This kind of a learning exercise is really important. You have to be able to watch what the opponent does. 
And sometimes they'll do things that are out of system, and we expect that, and you play with it, and you figure out what you can do to either take advantage of it, exploit it, or come up with a new thing. All right, now we're gonna shift over to boffers so they don't have to be as careful about each other's hands, and we'll show you what that looks like. So in our school, we have a unusually high proportion of artists and people who have to really protect our hands. So we keep boffers around. Warlord Combat Academy also has lots of boffers around. I strongly recommend having them as tools so you can engage in casual play with people who can't afford to have a hand injury if they want to keep eating. All right, go for it. And you will see very rapidly that the competitiveness comes out. And we have them staged at a distance with a camera. But if they were free to move around, I guarantee you, the whappening would get a lot tighter and faster. As you can see, they're already starting to speed up and get into the spirit of the play. For the most part, if you have a nice distance at this drill, it tends to be the hand as the target. But once people start getting aggressive, if you can slip in and get to that deep target, even though you only have three blows there, then you get the real ha ha got you going on. And as you can see, nobody ever, ever enjoys this drill. All right, thanks, guys. We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.